Hello, I'm Chris, and today on Curzy Fabrications, it's part two of my Ender 5 upgrade series. Today, we're gonna to be upgrading the magnetic bed to a glass bed. Let's go. As with any upgrade, let's first talk about why we want to do it in the first place. Well, with the glass bed over the magnetic bed, the glass bed is a more consistently level surface, meaning we can count on it being level when we layer down that first layer of filament. Uh, that'll make sure that from that point we have less failed prints and we don't have as many problems during the print process. Second reason we may want to use a glass bed is that it's going to provide a better sticking surface as long as you keep it clean. What that means is that instead of using any additives or anything on your print surface, if you clean it really well, kitchen sink with some detergent that, and keep your fingers off of it, it's actually going to be a better sticking surface than some of the third party ones or even like the build tax out there. So let's move on to the upgrade and we'll show you how it's done. So once you've finally chosen to go with the glass bed, you have two choices to choose from. First, you've got like what I'm showing here. This is a uh, piece of mirror. I picked this one up at Lowe's. Uh, they'll do the glass cutting there for you. All you have to do is show up with your dimensions. This is the cheapest of the options because they have giant sheets of this uh, mirror. And when you get it cut, you can actually probably get at least nine to 12 of these per sheet of mirror that they have in stock. Um, it's either that, of course, you can have it cut uh, down as I did with three of this size and then a couple of a different size for other printers or other uses around the house. Now your second option is what I have here on this other printer, which is like an ultra base. Uh, the one for the Ender 5 or the Ender 3 is not actually a branded ultra base. It's actually uh, one from Creality and you can get it on sites such as Amazon, uh, Banggood, Gearbest, those kind of sites. Uh, really, your choices come down to, do you want the finish of this one, which is gonna give it kind of a textured finish, uh, supposed to make it stick better. I actually do like the surf this surface on my ANET A8 printer, but I also like a good glass surface because it gives you a nice mirrored finish on your prints. Uh, plus, as I mentioned, if you keep it clean, it'll stick really well onto this surface. And in fact, I have found that if you print directly on the glass, then it'll actually lift up less than it will on the ultra base. One other form of glass I forgot to mention here is borosilicate glass. It's a high temperature glass, typically used in things like fireplaces. It has a lower thermal expansion than typical uh, tempered glass like we see in this mirror. But Tempered glass should be fine for an application such as this. We're not going to get up to the 500 degrees Celsius that borosilicate's rated for. So on this printer, as I mentioned, I'm going to go with the, the mirror. And what we'll need for this job, uh, we've got a couple of Allen wrenches that came with the printer. We've got a 16 millimeter uh, M4 screw, a uh, M4 nut. We've got some sandpaper, a ruler, and some of these binder clips that we're going to use to hold it onto the bed. So let's take a look at the process. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get a new piece of glass from the hardware store is we're going to need to clean up the edges to make sure that uh, no one gets cut on this bed. So that's what we're going to use our sandpaper for. Wrap it around the edge. Give it a once over. I'm using 220 grit. You can use uh, anything less than this, but I wouldn't use anything more. I'm going to make sure we get our corners really well. And obviously we want to make sure we get just the edges and not actually get the mirrored top. Otherwise we could mar up the finish and that will affect our prints that print on top of that area. Make sure you get that last corner too. So for now I'm not worried about the mirror being dirty or anything like that um, because we're going to do all the installation steps first and then we can clean up the, uh, the fingerprints and everything later. Moving on to the actual installation. First thing we need to do is remove our magnetic bed. Won't be needing that anymore. Now, if you really wanted uh, to go the extra mile on this installation, you could now come on here, actually try to remove the magnetic sticker that's on your aluminum bed. Uh, but I'm really worried about the amount of cleanup that that's going to cause. And then if for any reason we ever wanted to go back to the magnetic bed, we wouldn't be able to, so I'm leaving it on. First thing we need to do is back here in the back, you have this screw. This screw back here uh, is what hits your Z end stop, which is at the top of the printer. 
we're gonna need to pull that out and replace it with a longer screw because the bed is going to be thicker now. So this is a 12 millimeter screw. It's an M4. We're gonna replace that with a 16. Now, uh, some pre-testing I did says that the 16 is going to be a little bit too long. And so you could either adjust this down or what I prefer to do is I'm actually going to stick a M4 nut on here, turn it all the way down. All right, tighten that down. Finger tight's good enough. And I'm going to take that M4 screw and find the threads in the back. Again, we're going to tighten that up here. And then you tighten that. Um, again, finger tight is good enough. I don't think it's going to come out. Uh, once you get everything in place, if you want, feel free to come back and tighten this. Now, place our glass bed on here. Center it. If you had it cut to 235 by 235, which are the original dimensions of this print bed, uh, it should fit pretty square uh, on the bed and come to the edges. Now, to ensure that we can actually still print all the way to the edges of this printer, we're going to need a ruler. What we're going to do, we're going to actually measure, take our one of our binder clips. These are going to go on the sides instead of the front or the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure about four centimeters in from the edge, and we're going to put our binder clip right there. Okay? Do the same thing on the back. And I'll put it too close to the edge or you could crack the edge of the glass because these do have a lot of pressure on them. Same thing over here. Make sure we make sure they're in the same places. The four centimeters again. And here. And now our binder clips are as far away from the print head as possible without damaging the glass. Now obviously if you didn't cut this to size, if it's smaller, if it's 220 uh, by 220 or something like that, then you're probably going to be encroaching onto your build area. You'll have to figure out what that is and make adjustments in your slicer so that you don't run into the binder clips. All right, next up we're going to raise the bed. We're going to have to do that manually just by turning uh, the screw in the back. Uh, I find the easiest place to turn it is by using the connector that's connecting your motor to your uh, Z-screw. And once that's up, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make sure we lower this bed even further. And I think you can go till it's almost all the way down. Because what we want to make sure we don't do is slam that print head into the glass. And if you tighten all these all the way down, you'll make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, final step. Now this will fall just like it always does. And now it's a little bit heavier, so it's going to want to fall more. You can hold it up if you want to at this point. Let's turn on the printer. And go into our menu. I'm gonna auto home, just like we always do. Now at this point, we're gonna go through the steps of leveling the bed, just like we did when we first got the printer and just like you've done 100 times before. Uh, whichever method you prefer, uh, you can go through the menu, it'll go to the level point. I find that to be the easiest way to get through at least the first round of leveling. After that, I usually eye it. That one's good. What we're going to do now is go ahead and disable the steppers. And now we'll go ahead and take the uh, new glass bed. We're going to take it over to the kitchen sink. Like I said, let's go ahead and wash it uh, with the dish detergent, get it good and dry, clean it with paper towels, uh, just as you would a bathroom mirror. And then we'll come back, heat up the bed, level it one more time, and we'll do a test print. Now the first test print I'm going to run on here is actually one that I came up with. This is a 200 by 200 
X pattern uh, with a square around it. It's going to actually make sure that we can still print at least to the 200 by 200 perimeter of this print bed. And by running this print, we'll find out if there's going to be any problem so that before we print uh, an actual large model later, we'll know whether we're going to have any problems running into these binder clips. It'll also provide us a perfect print in order to level our bed. So while it's printing, as it's printing the perimeters, we want to make sure that we go ahead and get our layer height exactly the way we want it for this first print layer. So as you may be able to tell from this print, uh, not everything came out perfect, but it really wasn't designed to be perfect on the first print. Uh, you'll notice that when I was, uh, when it was laying down the first layer, I was really making sure that it was exactly the right height I was looking for. So I was constantly adjusting the knobs, making sure that as it went around the corners that they were tight. Uh, a couple times I got too close and then I'd just back off a little bit. But if you notice, it finished the entire print, uh, nothing lifted up. And at this point, the print can cool, and at that point, I'll take it off the bed. Uh, when working with a glass bed, particularly, or, or any heated bed for that matter, you want to make sure that you don't try to lift it up early or you can deform your print. Uh, wait till it cools down, then it'll lift up cleanly, and you can move on to the next print. And again, with this glass bed, keep your fingers off of it and um, use a scraper uh, to lift it up. It shouldn't require much effort once it's cooled down. That about does it for this Ender 5 upgrade video. If you're looking for any of the components that I used in today's video, I'll make sure I include a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking for that test print, that's something that I modeled that I made available on Thingiverse, you'll find a link to that as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. Also, please subscribe to my channel for more content. If you have any ideas that you'd like to share on which uh, upgrades I should perform to the printer next, please leave a comment down below. Thanks again for joining me here today on Cursey Fabrications.